In this video, we will use these three commons to make infinite mana on turn three. And the deck is pretty insane. This combo abuses the persist mechanic. When Putrid Goblin dies, it will come back with a minus one minus one counter. However, if we can cast a first day of class before the persist trigger resolves from the Putrid Goblin, then it comes back and gains a plus one plus one counter, meaning that we can persist the Goblin again. Pair this idea with a Skirk Prospector and a Dark Dweller Oracle and you can draw your whole deck, make infinite mana and fling the Putrid Goblin infinite times at the opponent with makeshift munitions. This is a new Goblins combo deck that just won a huge online popper tournament, so I had to try it out for this video. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, the completely free to play online RPG game. With over 650 unique champions and millions of players with over 80 million downloads, there's no better time to get into Raid than now. Before we go any further, let me tell you about my favorite faction in Raid, the elusive and mysterious Sylvan Watchers. Rather than building a sprawling city on the ground or in a cave, the Sylvan Watchers made their home in the Mistwood, a huge jungle in the east of Teleria. Don't expect to walk in the park if you try to visit the Sylvan Watchers. If the beasts don't kill you, the Sylvan will probably kill you for trespassing on their land. There's a load of cool character variety in this faction, with each champion being in tune with nature in a cool and unique way. Some have plants or mushrooms growing off them, while some are even literal trees. Here are a few of my favorites. Raid has just released a new legendary champion, Ronda Rousey. Just log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th, and Ronda's yours. This is available for both new and old players right now. To all new Raid players, Raid's preparing something special for you. It's time for you to vote on your favorite starter champion. Download Raid Shadow Legends from the link below, copy your in-game player ID, and then go to championselect.polarium.com, simply enter in your player ID, and then vote for your chosen champion. That's all that there is to it. This vote runs from January 16th to February 10th with all eligible entrants being into the opportunity to win an awesome in-game and real-life prizes. Only to new players from the US can win a prize. I personally love the insane graphics and clan bosses to keep me and my friends occupied. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, then click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen and you'll get a unique bonus worth $35. We're talking a free epic champion, Jotun, 100k silver, 50 gems, and 2 epic skill tomes. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for 30 days for new players only. Now, let's get into some combo gameplay. To start off the first match of this video, we're on the play and we have an insane opening hand. We have a Skirt Prospector, a Putrid Goblin, and a Deadly Dispute to help us dig for our third combo piece. We start off the game with a tap land, and the opponent starts with a Plains and a God Pharaoh's Faithful. Now, like an absolute beast, this is the Harry MTG channel. We are the luckiest people on this earth. We rip first day of class off the top, meaning that we can now combo on turn three. We pass back the turn and the opponent plays a basic island and a modern age. This lets them loot as it's a saga, but they discard a prismatic strands, which is a big problem for us. The flashback ability on prismatic strands means they can tap the God Pharaoh's faithful and flash it back. Now it prevents all damage of a source's color of your choice, which in this case will be red, which will prevent my makeshift munitions from dealing damage. Despite this, we're still gonna go for the combo, so I play Skirt Prospector, then I play my land, sacrifice the Putrid Goblin to make a red mana, and then we can first stay of class in response to the Persist Trigger, meaning that when the Putrid Goblin comes back, it has a minus one minus one counter, but we override the Persist because the first day of class removes that. This means that we can keep sacking the Putrid Goblin again and again and again, getting as much red mana as we like, and as we have Goblin Matron in our hand, we can play that and find the Dark Dweller Oracle, then we can make infinite mana with the Putrid Goblin, then sack the Putrid Goblin infinite times and draw our whole deck. Now, while this is easy in practice and with our words on Magic Online, this is difficult because you can't assemble loops. You have to click through everything. So I spent 15 minutes, yes, I spent 15 minutes, not only trying to navigate my opponent's prismatic strands, but also to the fact that this was a completely new combo to me and I had to work everything out. So what I ended up deciding to do is I cast as many creatures as possible, get the makeshift munitions into play, and either combo on the opponent's upkeep if I have to because I have the other first day of class in hand, or just attack them to death so that I don't ruin my chest clock, which you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. On the opponent's turn, they just cast a cantrip and a creature. That's easy to beat when we're using the attack plan as well as just have lethal with the makeshift munitions. So I first day of class attack him with everything and they concede. Going into boarding, they're a blue-white deck, which means that they're going to be exiling our creatures so we can't reanimate them, and they're going to have counter spells, so let's bring in the duresses and the pyroblasts. 
Going into game two, come on, you know I'm a beast. That's right, we're gonna have another turn three infinite mana combo. This game just a bit too easy for me. The game starts off with both of us playing tap lands, and we find a pyroblast off the top of the deck, which is what we need. Now we get to turn two, and I play a little bit scared. I play the Skirt Prospector instead of the Putrid Goblin because I want to hold up pyroblast for a blue spell. Then things get really suspicious. My opponent with six cards in hand and three mana just passes. So this screams a counterspell, I'm not going to play my cards into a counterspell, so let's just play our bounce land, get our value, and hold up Pyroblast again. Now, if you thought passing with 3 mana was suspicious, how about passing with 4 mana? Now my shields are up, I want to be protected from multiple counterspells. We top deck a Nihil Spellbomb, so let's just play that and look forward to cantripping. The opponent does cycle an Ash Barons on the end step, plays another land, and another God Pharaoh, and ships back the turn. If this wasn't screaming counterspell, I really don't know what is, but once we can afford to play around counterspells, we're going to start slamming the combo. Well, that's an easy way to play around counterspells. Have more counterspells yourself. I start off the turn with a putrid goblin, which does resolve, so now I'm going to sack it for a red mana and cast first day of class. The opponent tries to counter back twice, but we have two power blasts, so they can just cry while I do my combo. So what we're going to do here is make infinite mana, then use first day of class and Goblin Matron to cantrip for the Dark Dweller Oracle, and then we're going to draw infinite cards, and then find our makeshift munitions, sack for infinite mana, then sack my Putrid Goblin, use infinite mana at the face with the makeshift munitions. This was really close. Look at the bottom left. That's my chest clock. We got down super low, but we managed to get enough mana to ping the opponent's face and do this for lethal. Magic Online was lagging so badly, I almost lost a time. Moving on to the next round, we're on the draw and have to mulligan a clunky opening 7, but can keep a decent 6. Let's bottom the unearth as we have no creatures in hand, and try and hope to draw a deadly dispute. Starting off the game, it's clear my opponent's on affinity, and we just both play a turn 2 Inker Wellspring. We pass back the turn, and the opponent just plays a tap land, a frogmite, and says go, making me scared of metallic rebuke, so I'm just going to transmute this shred memory to get first day of class, and set up to combo. What's nice about Transmute is you cannot counter it unless you have an effect like Stifle, which people don't have access to in Pauper. So we get the first day of class and say go. On our end step, the opponent deadly disputes, getting a treasure token and three cards because they sack the Icar Wellspring. That is a ton of value. With the opponent drawing a ton of cards, just attacking in for two, playing a Blood Fountain and saying go, I am very scared of Metallic Rebuke here. What I don't like though is the fact that I just played a bit patient this turn. Maybe I could have gone for the combo. The opponent then activates the blood token on their end step to loot away a useless land. The opponent then attacks him with the frogmite, plays a 4-4 and plays another blood fountain. I activate the chromatic star on the end step, drawing an Icar Wellspring showing that I probably should have done that in my main phase. And I also then find a Dark Dweller Oracle off the top of the deck, meaning that we have the full combo assembled, I just need to find a way to work around counter spells and removal spells from the opponent. I decide to play the Icar Wellspring first, and then play the Dark Dweller Oracle to set up for a combo next turn. The opponent then activates the blood token, discarding their last card in hand to draw a card, meaning that they didn't have access to Metallic Rebuke. So this whole game I was playing scared of cards that the opponent didn't have. Maybe it was wrong, maybe it was right, who knows, but what I do know is I'm going for the combo next turn. The opponent just attacks, cantrips a bit, and passes back the turn, so now we're going to go for the combo. The opponent draws a few cards in response to the first day of class and then concedes when we get the combo on the table, saving us time on this earth. Going into boarding, we want all the artifact hate in, and cut some clunky cards. Now I do cut the smash to dust, which do destroy artifacts, but slow sorcery speed 1 for 1 artifact removal is not what we're looking for, we're looking for a lot of value. Going into game 2, we keep a very risky hand. Now my logic behind it is this, I just need any colored mana, and I can cast the Icar Wellspring and the Deadly Dispute, which is good enough to fix my mana for red, and if I find a red source off the top, I've got the Gorilla Shaman to absolutely blow out the opponent, so I think it's worth the risk, especially on the draw. The opponent starts the game off with a tap land and ships back the turn, and like an absolute beast, we rip a red source off the top for our first draw step of the game, so let's play the Skirt Prospector and pass back the turn. The opponent just plays a tap land, passes back, so we Icar Wellspring and attack, but they have the Galvanic Blast. But to make our life even better, the opponent plays a 1-drop and misses their third land. So now we can deadly dispute the Icar Wellspring and play a slower game and start stone raining them next turn. You could Masked Vandal this turn to destroy one of their lands, but I wanted to be a bit more patient and not go to discard because I feel like every card matters against Affinity because they draw so many cards. So I play the Chromatic Star and pass back the turn, and life only gets better for me when they play an artifact land that we can destroy with the Gorilla Shaman. Our next turn is going to be insane. 
Gorilla Shaman lets us destroy that land, and then we can Mast Vandal to destroy another land by exiling a creature from our graveyard, and from here, the opponent was dead, and they conceded the game. Overall, I really like this deck. I managed to combo consistently with the list, and as this was my first time playing with the deck, it wasn't too hard to make sure I did the combo optimally. Now, the biggest problem is that this combo is so weak to removal. If the opponent knows what you're doing and they have access to removal spells, it's very easy to prevent you from comboing, making things difficult. My two losses, my first one was to flood and my second one was to removal spells, but overall we managed a 3-2 beating walls in the final round. As always, if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it while I open these chests.